Hey guys, hope you're keeping well. So I've just sat down with John and Greg of Pure Reason Revolution. Talk about the band's brand new album, Above Cirrus, which is out today, Friday the 6th of May. It is an absolute stormer, guys, as a Pure Reason Revolution fan. Uh, it's got everything you want in it. It's got the, you know, it's got the anthemics, it's got the heavy riffs, it's got all the sort of ambient sounds, it's got the melody, it's a jam-packed record. And it was one of those ones for me personally where, you know, I'd heard the singles uh, individually, Dead Butterfly, Phantoms, and New Kind of Evil, and I really liked them as singles, but as I said to the guys while we were chatting, um, it's an album that is bigger than the sum of its parts, and, you know, every song feeds into one another. It's exactly uh, what you want from Pure Reason, or certainly what I want from Pure Reason Revolution album. Uh, so if you like me, you're a big fan, go grab the album and have a listen to this chat between John and Greg and myself, where we speak about the album itself, the recording process, uh, logistics, obviously with uh, Greg being out in Portland and John being in Berlin, uh, the recent shows across Europe and the London that, that they did recently and everything they've got lined up for the rest of the year and into 2023. And you can hear everything that John, Greg and myself had to say right now. And I'm joined by John and Greg of Pure Reason Revolution. How are you keeping, guys? Good. I'm doing well. Spring has arrived in Berlin. It's nice. Yeah, doing all right. It's, it's here in Portland, Oregon, too. <laughs> good weather across the globe then um obviously on friday when we air this uh will be the release date of the new album above cirrus uh i've been fortunate enough to have been sent the album um before we spoke today and um i've been blaring the album out um, been fortunate enough the day off to soak it up a bit more um this has got everything you want from a pure reason revolution fans point of view guys this is a stunning record you must be really happy with how this is uh how this one's turned out yeah no, no, we are. It's always one of these things when you finish a record, you get it mastered, then you kind of go, oh no, there's nothing else we can do now, it's finished. Uh, <laughs> we'll have this little break before it then goes out to media, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then it's just really nice when you start getting back some feedback, you start seeing some reviews. We were lucky. Like the have been out, right. or, yeah, we managed to get out and do some shows recently and that was amazing yeah yeah it's it's been really cool to like because it's been you know it's been a long time making it and then there was you know finishing it felt like this real flurry of activity trying to get it done in time for all the deadlines and then it's this strange waiting period where yeah it's been like oh we don't feel quite so connected to the songs as we did and then yeah all of a sudden it's like oh wow people are hearing this stuff that that we worked on that, that we've made and it's like and you're just like, oh yeah, that's 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 so cool. That's so great that people are enjoying it and and hearing the stuff in it that you hope they will, which is really cool. Yeah, for me, it was one of those albums where you know when you release singles, when you release Phantoms and New Kind of Evil and and Dead Butterflies, respectfully, I was really enjoying them as individual songs. But again, having today, now that I've had, listened to it as a whole album, it's sort of the album is bigger than the sum of its parts, if you will. It's one of one of those albums for me. Really, that's great. So um, obviously you're hot on sort of the foot after uh, you, 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 yeah, that came out in um, 2020 was that album that came out on it. So was the plan to follow up as quickly or was it just a case of obviously not being able to gig uh, the previous record for obvious reasons? That's it, exactly. Yeah, we, we finished Utnea and then we had touring planned. Uh, we had recording planned. I was meant to be heading out to Greg in Portland to to do some more record, or at least our initial sessions for what would be this record. But you know, COVID hit. Everything got postponed. Flights not possible to the states. But yeah, what what can we do? We can't do shows, but we can, of course, you know, start recording. You know, I'm often in isolation in this studio. Greg's in isolation there. Not a lot changes for the. For the kind of stuff we do yeah. we're often alone recording so we, we did begin some some remote recording stuff um yeah but then finally you know we did get together for se sessions we ended up having a session in the new forest in the uk oh, wow. to, it was sort of yeah not loophole, but so is that again john well uh, not a loophole but we managed to yeah i could get States. you can get to, to G yeah but it was a loophole it was september 2020 and so like most places were like you cannot travel here there is no way you can but because we're both british i couldn't get to germany john couldn't get to the usa but we could both go to the uk 
Um, and I remember getting on a flight um, from Seattle and there were 20 people on a massive Boeing Dreamliner. It was the strangest thing. Um, but yeah, but we had a couple of weeks then. Um, my parents live in the New Forest and we were able to stay with them and, and like makeshift a studio. And Chloe came down too. And, and it was, I mean, it was a hugely kind of fruitful session where we, we worked on a whole load of ideas and got like a bunch of the songs um, you know, kind of written and started and, and really moving in the right direction in that time. And so it was cool. And even even the pictures that are on the, the record were taken on that visit. So it was like, <laughs> we, we really got a lot done in that, that couple of weeks. That sounds like you uh, got as much as you could done in those few weeks. And if you were doing the press photos and everything else, well, I just suppose you had Definitely. to. Definitely. Yeah, we, we had to. We had your, you set up your tripod tripod didn't you and, and we set up yeah got the photos for the inlay i don't think i even had a tripod i think i just sort of balanced <laughs> my phone on a rock or something like that <laughs> that's cool um actually um am i right in thinking greg that you weren't involved in you now from the scene around the recording process of it no I, we um i wasn't officially part of the band but there are i think three tracks on that record that we collaborated on oh. um yeah, so it was, I mean, it, obviously it had been a long time since we'd worked together, but then uh, we had sessions where I went to Berlin. Um, and so I think the first song that we did, um, you know, together again after years was Silent Genesis. And I think, you know, that that song came out so well that we were like, okay, this this clearly still works. You know, this collaboration is worth pursuing. And I think that was a lot of the reason for, you know, trying to get started on Above Cirrus pretty quick too, was like well, this, you know, this is fun. This is cool. I think we appreciate, um, you know, that this kind of uh, working with someone else in this way doesn't doesn't necessarily happen every day. So let's make the most of it. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think we had, you know, <clears throat> when Greg and I first began working on on the near bits, we were always quite conscious of the geography and sort of how mm. how we could make it work with shows in Europe, with Greg being in the states and. And so, yeah, we collaborated a bit on Yubnir and then with Above Sirius, it went up again. And then we, then that's when it got to the point of, right, okay, it's probably going to be expensive for Greg to come over, but, you know, it just all makes sense now. You know, Greg's involvement's gone up a big whack. Yeah. Uh, let's just bite the bullet and, and we'll make it work. You know, we'll just have to force promoters yeah. to give us bigger fees. <laughs> <laughs> just twist them arms and get what you deserve, that's all. <laughs> Um, I mean, the last time I saw you guys, I've not managed to catch a show since you've reformed. So the last time I saw you guys was before you went on hiatus. Um, but oh, you, uh, I went to the came to the show at Norwich. I think it was at the Art Centre. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, me and my wife, well, then girlfriend, now wife, came up to that. So uh, that was the last time we saw you guys. But uh, I mean, when you did go on hiatus, did you have a plan, a long term plan to come back, or was it at that no. point? it just wasn't working anymore there was never yeah there was never any plans for it to come back um <clears throat> i think you know it just we felt like it had run its course at that time after hammer and anvil and everybody just wanted to move on to different things so it was a mutual ending yeah for it um i think for and then for for pure reason coming back i I'd, I'd done this other record with bullet high we'd done some touring um and yeah, it, it, sort of the cycle of that record has finished. And then it got to the point of, well, do I make another bullet height record or, or what, what, where am I at sort of thing? And I, I just had this feeling of, I don't really want to make this sort of angry electronic rock, you know, night blaring sort of nine inch nails kind of music anymore. Or, or yeah, not, not, I wasn't in this sort of intense mode. Yeah. I thought, you know, I'd, I'd like to go back to something more progressive, more to this pure mm -hmm. sound. And then that's when I picked up the phone to, you know, Greg, Chloe mentioned it to management, the label, and everyone seemed to think that, that it was a good idea. So, yeah, that's how it restarted, really. That's cool. Um, I was just saying, you mentioned you just did um, some, well, shows you Europe, Europe and UK, wasn't it? Um, obviously, Chloe can make the dates because of other commitments. Um, how did that work for you guys doing the shows without Chloe? I know you had, um, I've forgotten the lady's name now. I was a little watching her band earlier. We had a Annika Shireen Annika, yeah. covering uh, Chloe. Yeah, the shows were incredible. I mean, 
it was definitely a, a real push to you know get all the songs going and for, you know for Annika I mean a huge amount to learn mm. um in terms of lyrics and and all the vocal parts that are kind of intricate in a lot of places <laughs> um and she's I mean she's amazing she really just yeah showed up so prepared um and you know every night was you know putting on an incredible show so it was um yeah she kind of I mean she definitely showed me up as far as preparation um and uh yeah the shows I mean they went they went so well it was I mean our first one in St Stuttgart I was definitely nervous it was the first time playing with Pure Reason for me for years like more than 15 years and so it was um it was sort of bizarre to be playing these songs that I remember playing way 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 ago and and yet people are still you know singing along and I mean it's it, it was really cool and um yeah, I mean, we we definitely missed Chloe, and and you know, fans, you know, were, were definitely saying, "Oh, where's Chloe?" And we we're like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a little uneasy, but um, but we're you know, we're so thankful that Annika could could step in like that. I mean, I saw some footage of it, and I don't know what it's like from you guys because obviously it's your band, so you know more than me. But from a listener's point of view, she's got a hell of a voice, and she certainly you know had the chops to sort of carry over those parts. And I'll be honest, definitely. I definitely until um, Chloe put up the video saying, you know, that she couldn't uh, make the tours for, for other commitments and stuff. So I've only sort of recently started listening to our own projects and they're, they're amazing. I yeah. think, you know, Lee, we got to the, we got to these cro the crossroads of, you know, Chloe wasn't available because of, you know, other music and day job commitments. Hmm. And we just, it got to the point of, well, do we just cancel these shows? Because, and we just thought, no, you know, we, we can't, we're, we're, we're a band, we're producing regular records, we have to get out. It's such an integral part to get out there and perform it. Um, a friend of mine said to me recently, he said, John, the easy bit is making the record, the hard bit is getting it heard. And at first I thought, you know, making the record is so hard, you know, you put in so many hours, so much attention to detail that we put in. You know, Greg and I, we've travelled across nations to get together to do it uh, you know a couple of times and but he was totally right if it doesn't get heard then it was all kind of a well not a waste of time but we need to get it out to a wider yeah, audience you want you to make it to say out on your own listen to as much as you enjoy yeah. the process of making the music right it has to get and out it, to people and we have to get out and play live hmm. whatever that however that may be yeah and playing live i mean it really hits home how you know what yeah like you know the music means so much to people and it's it's incredible to feel that and incredible to be in a room with you know people that appreciating the music and, and you know feeling it and like just like you know even yeah even like in our london show head banging together like it was such a sort of release we're doing these songs at the end and like it was i mean it was crazy um it was so cool i must admit i saw like i say i saw some of the footage of the shows and i was Pretty jealous. I didn't manage to get tickets sorted out to come down. No, I just clashed with some work stuff. Yeah, you sh you should be jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Promise I'll make it up and come around next time. Right? <laughs> I say it was before high eight, so it's been way too long since I've seen you guys live. So, uh, speaking, I think next year, um, yeah, there should be definitely. I mean, we only had London this time, didn't we? Yeah. So we would like to definitely add at least three or four, you know, UK shows. I think would seem reasonable, perfectly reasonable. No, definitely. I mean, we was um, hoping to see you guys at uh, Rambling Man Fair. We had tickets for that, but obviously that all got canned because yeah. of everything. So you know, that, that was our hope. But uh, like the whole well, the whole festival didn't happen. So yeah. <laughs> um, you were saying about obviously the recording process because you guys are so far apart logistically. So did the pandemic actually affect how you guys write in any way at all? If you well, obviously you've, had, you've got that distance. Um, you know, we began these couple of things. We did some vocals, didn't we, remotely? We did this first track, um, our prism, where we ended up getting rid of the first part and using that. But the rest of it, we managed to get together, didn't we? Uh, yeah. For it definitely, I mean, I think we would have preferred more time. But I guess, yeah, as with everyone through this last couple of years, you just have to, it was a case of, well, let's make do, let's, you know, make the best of what we have. Um, I think we did that, you know, pretty successfully. 
um it was yeah it was it was tough you know it was a bit sort of like it's not as easy you know over a zoom call as far as like interacting with each other to try and write something you know you're not you're not quite you know not sparking off each other in quite the same way but um but yeah i mean i think you know the the results came out so good we're we're, we're really pleased with with how it came out we did actually we did the drum session didn't we remotely that worked oh well, yeah in london um <clears throat> so we worked with jeff dugmore again and he was oh, yeah. uh, in a session uh at core studios in acton greg was in portland me in berlin and <laughs> oh, didn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. It was good, but um, yeah, we found this. There was this software that, like, will send audio, really high quality audio, over the internet. So it it meant that we could actually hear the drums well, not like with the sort of stop start kind of Zoom call deal that you know you might expect. And so that, yeah, that it, you know, in a lot of ways, it was like, oh, I'm almost in the studio, but you know. But actually not. <laughs> um, obviously, I know uh, for yourself, John. You wrote it like during a, a personal time with you, with your daughter coming into the world uh, earlier than planned. Did, um, did that feed into the lyrics at all, or was it just more of a, an emotional set that carried on through the songs rather than being specifically about your daughter's arrival? I mean, this was more, <clears throat> yeah, with with the lyric, the lyrics on you near that was definitely uh, a big influence. Um, when she was in intensive care, high dependency, uh, the ups and downs through this whole period. Um, with COVID, uh, so sorry, and then more with Above Cirrus, what we did when we first, when the pandemic first came, um, you have in Germany these, these gardens, that are, what I could say are mainly like allotments that you have in the UK. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they make a bit more of it here. You sort of have a hut on it where you can have a, a little, where you can stay over basically. Yeah. In Berlin, especially as the pandemic came, everyone wanted these gardens, so they were impossible to get hold of. But we looked a little bit outside of the box um, and we looked into some of the surrounding areas. So I looked at this town, Frankfurt Oder, that was east of Germany, uh, east of Berlin on the Poland border. Um, and I found a garden here. So we we sort of decamped to this garden because we were previously in this, you know, very small city centre apartment, which was pretty um, testing for, you know, a small family plus dog uh, in 55 square metres. So we, anyway, so in the first lockdown, you know, we, we found this this garden, we went there and we just sort of had this primitive existence. We could be out at nature, uh, growing vegetables, our little flowers. Eventually, found a little studio there, and yeah, going back to Jessie, um, we were concerned at first because she, you know she'd had this lung development, um, wasn't so good at the beginning. So then, you know, when when COVID comes along and it's a respiratory yeah. virus, of course, that set up more more worry. Uh, but we found this safe place and it was, it was a real blessing to have this this garden really well we did. I was going to say that must have been quite a, a haven to have that safe place and exactly. both, both away from the distractions of everyone panicking in the inner city and also obviously physically for your daughter as well with the respiratory sort of things to have that. And I think creativity for me in the whole two years was was sort of up and down it was I don't know, sometimes, it, maybe because of the lack of variety, it was sort of quite flat sometimes, and other times it would be quite intense and I'd really go into the studio. How about for you, Greg? What did, did you... Was, yeah, that, it what? was... I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's been way too many hours just spent on my own in a room trying to conjure up something, you know, that's... Um, and yeah, John talked about his garden. It was great, we managed to get um a trip you know once germany opened up again i was able to to go out to to frankfurt Oder and and I, actually i stayed in poland and would cross the border each nice. each morning as we were doing working on stuff and um yeah it was just it was a great place to work you know it's it was beautiful town um the studio was really cool and yeah we we found so much inspiration just from that that trip as well and spending time in in john's garden and um yeah it was 
it you know moments like that made you think oh god I, I really hope that you know things open up fully and I think we're still feeling a bit like that you know it's like yeah no one I, I've not enjoyed being shut away <laughs> <laughs> no I think, I think you're right I think there's there's still an element of that and when you've got the sort of the outdoorness of it I guess it feels less constricting sometimes but uh no it's not being easy that's for sure yeah so, um, one of the things, actually, going back to the session and talking about Frankfurt Oda, we had, when, when we did this session remotely with Jeff, he said to us, Greg and I were just talking once over the beginning of Scream Sideways. And, um, and Jeff said to us, oh, guys, like, it sounds really cool when you talk over the front of the track. Greg and I probably were just talking about what we were going to have for lunch or something like that. So it wasn't anything interesting, but we just kind of logged that comment as, you know, put it in the notebook, maybe add some, some dialogue between some of the tracks. And then when we were in Frankfurt Oda, that's where we developed this idea. Uh, and some of the happenings, some of the experiences we had in Frankfurt Oda became this dialogue that we put yeah, cool. together. Initially, it was me and Greg doing the voice, but we hated how we sounded. <laughs> and then we had the idea, you know, this was this was Jeff's idea. So if it was, if he seeded this idea, then he can do it. <laughs> uh, so then we sent it over. We sent our, I don't know, our rough dialogue, didn't we, to Jeff? And yeah, and he he sounds way better than we. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one likes the sound of their own voice, do they? No, no, exactly. Um, but I thought those bits tied in the tracks really well together. Like I was saying, like, you know, when I heard the songs individually, it was cool, but there's those little bits that seem to tie in together into this sort of, you know, for one of a better term, this bigger, bigger piece of art. Yeah. And I think it, that is for us what it did too. We, we were able to capture our own field recordings, um, you know, of, uh, you know, places we were going in Frankfurt, or also, you know, other, other places too. But that, you know, kind of created this little collage of, of sound for each of those things um but yeah i think helped helped for us even hang hang the tracks together where you know it, it became a whole rather than these you know individual things no that's cool so the studio that you'd found that you worked or had or worked there previously or was it just a, a new find because of the sort of situation you were in? Uh, yeah i found this so yeah the, the garden was just north of frankfurt Oda, then i found this sort of um, art center in an old gramophone factory basically oh. in the town so i had started renting this room maybe a few months before greg came along mm. and then we just <laughs> there was a load of junk in there wasn't there it was like a <laughs> bed oven. it was like beds and weird furniture but we put that into like a we made a makeshift vocal booth uh yeah yeah it was quite a, the vocal booth was uh, not pretty, but effective. Um, it was pretty funny. And then, the, yeah, every now and then, you know, you'd, you'd hear funny sounds down the hall. And actually, some of that made it into the interludes, too. I think we, we there was this old piano at the end of the hallway that was like so out of tune. I think it was like a full step out of tune. But um, I think I think you can hear a bit of that on one of the interludes. So it was it was a cool, I mean, a really cool place. Sound like it had that sort of atmosphere that was sort of feeding into that record like you had those things to, to to play around with as it were yeah and, and all these little things give new inspiration i think you know you you sort of you play the old piano down the corridor that's a bit weird and then that sparks you on to some new you know some of the some of the spoken word you know that came between and then that gives you new inspiration to try some vocals that we were doing a lot on and it all adds together and then we're constantly bouncing off each other anyway and it just yeah it just was it was a good experience a good uh, an inspiring yeah. time. that's cool so did the would you carry that sort of similar writing and recording process obviously the other being able to get physically together a lot easier would you carry that forward to the to the next project do you think or would you just see what takes yeah definitely i hope so yeah it sounds like you had a lot of fun though making it and i think that definitely feeds through into to the album itself you can a lot of fun and some some good schnitzel in in berlin too always a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> always yeah. a highlight 
I guess the, it could be me doing a trip to Portland, Greg perhaps coming over to Germany again. Well, it's going to be a combination of that kind of thing. Um, plus then always, you know, a bit of studio time alone. And, you know, then we weave together the album and there'll be another one, I'm sure, in the next year or so. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. So um, if anyone is listening who hasn't bought the album, platform yours, guys. Obviously, we're going to launch this on, uh, on the album launch day on Friday. So what would you like to say to anyone who's not purchased it as yet? Buy the album. Buy Above Cirrus <laughs> by Pure Reason Revolution. It's the greatest album you've ever heard. <laughs> I'm gonna have that as a sound bite on my radio show and just keep leaving. <laughs> it's subliminally. Yeah, just run it under every song you're playing. Yeah. By Above Cirrus. By just Pure real low frequency. To just Revolution. I know that you're in it. <laughs> No, I think we're, yeah, we're really proud of it and we definitely want people to hear it and to, you know, take, we've, we hope it's not, you know, I think prog records can be really long and I think this one, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's manageable. It's not like a huge, um, you know, time suck in a way that, that I think, you know, if, if we were handing out a massive double album, I think you're asking a lot of people, but, um, you know, I know that we put time into making sure that all of the songs are, you know catchy that there's no like you know no we, we've trimmed the fat on them all if you sort of mean even though maybe that some of them are long we've definitely um you know i think we've put together something that's 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 coherent and we you know i think yeah the first time i listened through it was like wow this this all this all makes sense so we want people to experience it and enjoy it um yeah that's cool I mean, i'd say like i say just from a listener's point of view i think you you're right, I think every every song's got its place, and you know, like I say, all before like I was saying it all builds up to to this bigger piece of work. So, no, I'm really excited. I mean, have you got any plans to come back to the UK as yet? I know you've only just sort of been here with the London date and such, just for my own greed more than anything. <laughs> 2023, there will be more more extensive headline tour. Um, yeah, I guess with shows on the continent and the UK, definitely. And like we said, yeah, Greg will be pleased if we make it to North America. And I'm sure it looks like we've hopefully got a few offers. So we oh, cool. could tie in a few things. Well, hopefully put together a tour over there as well. Sounds good. And uh, other than the release of the album itself, what does the, you know, the rest of the year and into 2023 look for you guys? I guess more record, you know, if, we're, if there aren't going to be more shows after these summer shows, then probably beginning with recording again. I would say so perhaps into the autumn uh start of winter get on with some new demos and we'll, we'll get recording again and then yeah then 2023 will be here before we know it and we'll be rehearsing a longer set for uh <clears throat> yeah yeah for for touring i think greg was a bit surprised at how long is expected for shows <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was the 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 prog scene in europe is is not something I'm, you know, hugely familiar with. So then they were like, oh, yeah, we need to be doing a 75 minute set. And I'm like, what? <laughs> In the US, I don't think I've ever been to a show that was that long. You know, like I go and see like some massive band from the 70s that have like thousands of songs and they'll only do like an hour or something. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, it was a challenge. But, you know, I, I think, yeah, we just about pulled it off for these last ones. And then, yeah, we got we got to we got to do more for the summer. So it's. There's more to there's more to perfect. <laughs> British mate, we like to get our money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks for talking to me. It's been great to speak to you. Um, at the beginning of the interview, I'm going to play "Dead Butterfly" with it being the, the latest single. But what song off the album would you like us to play at the end of the interview? Ooh. I say "Cruel Deliverance." Oh, good call. Okay, if I'm happy with that, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Yeah, all right, we'll go with that then. Uh, thanks for chatting to us, John and Greg, mate. It's been great to talk to you. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next year. All right, thanks very much, Lee. Thanks. Cheers, see you. Bye. Bye.